In this video, I'm going to go over another type of hydrocarbon. These are known as the cyclic hydrocarbons. I mentioned this uh, earlier. So carbon carbon bonding is common. Well, if this bonding leads to the formation of what's known as a ring structure, they're known as cyclic hydrocarbons. So uh, let's have a look at these. Uh, just in terms of some things you need to remember for naming cyclic hydrocarbons. So molecules that have carbon carbon bonding but the longest continuous chain forms a ring. So that's important. What you're now looking for is if the longest continuous chain is part of a ring structure, that dictates it's now a cyclic hydrocarbon. These rings can be branch free or can contain alkyl branches. Uh, and as we'll learn later, could actually have other substitute functional groups. The ring component is dealt with by adding the prefix cyclo to an alkane name. That's really the only difference. So that's shown here in by example. So cyclohexane, six carbon ring structure. That's what makes it a cyclic hydrocarbon. It's a ring structure. And because it's six carbons, it's a hexane. So cyclohexane. Any branches are dealt with, with uh, by numbering accordingly if necessary and naming and alphabetization, all that stuff we've we've looked at previously. So I think you'll find cyclic hydrocarbons is pretty straightforward because you already have the background. So let's have a look at some. So again, naming uh, a regular hydrocarbon with the prefix cyclo in front. Um, and then any alkyl branches dealt with as alkyl branches. So here's our first example. So there's the cyclic hydrocarbon ring structure. I would count these carbons, remember this is a line structural diagram, I count those carbons, so it's six, so that is cyclohexane. In the second example, I have the longest continuous chain being this ring. I'm going to start numbering from where a branch is, because that minimizes the position of the branch. Here's my ring, it's four carbons long, so that's a cyclobutane, and on carbon one, I have my methyl branch. Now, if this is the only branch, I don't need a number. So I can just call this methyl cyclobutane. And why don't I need a number? Because the the branch is on a carbon, it's only this it's it's only one single branch, and therefore it has to be on carbon. To minimize it, it has to be carbon one. So the one in fact becomes redundant. You don't really need it. If I had a second branch anywhere in there, I would require numbering. We see that here. So here's my ring. So I'm going to start numbering that. And that's a five carbon ring. So that's a cyclopentane. But now what I have is two methyl branches. They're both on carbon one, but I have to numb them because one of those branches could be on another uh, carbon. So it's going to be one comma one dimethyl, because there's two methyl groups, both on carbon one, cyclopentane. So now the numbering is required. Must number branches. As soon as you have more than one, you need to number. If there's only one, you don't need it because it'll always be carbon one. Last example of drawing then. So again, another cyclopentane. What I have here is a methyl branch and what I have here is an ethyl branch so I can number a couple of ways but I'm going to number this way one two three four five and if I number this way for one thing I'm minimizing branches and that puts the ethyl on carbon one and you have to order them alphabetically so it's just a little little more organized so this is going to be one ethyl three methyl. Remember alkyl groups are alphabetized. Cyclopentane. Another answer that would be acceptable is if you this was carbon one. If you made the um, the the carbon with the methyl branch carbon one, this would be still be carbon three to minimize position. So you would but you would alphabetize the branches so it would be three ethyl one methyl cyclopentane. That is also an acceptable name. Drawing cyclohydrocarbons, then it's all in the name. So here we have where our branches are. We have two methyl branches on carbons one and carbon three. It's cyclic. 
So it's a ring, and there's our the length of our ring, butane, four. So one, two, three, four. There's my cyclobutane ring. Carbon one is a methyl branch. Carbon three is a methyl branch. And I would attach hydrogens to satisfy the carbon bonding. And there's my diagram of 1,3-dimethyl cyclobutane. And finally, 3-methyl-1-propyl cyclohexane. So a cyclohexane is a 6-carbon ring. So 1-carbon, 2-carbon, 3, 4, 5, 6. Join the last one up. I'm going to put my 3... I'm going to make... Or sorry, I'm going to make this carbon 1. So that'll be a propyl branch. So 1-carbon, 2-carbon, 3-carbon. Line structure item. Carbon 1, 2, 3. Now I could go 2, 3. It doesn't really matter. Let's go there. So there's my 3-methyl, 1-propyl cyclohexane. So as you can see, cyclics is really not a lot different from alkanes. The cyclic component comes as a cyclo prefix, so that tells you it's a cyclic hydrocarbon. And obviously from a structure, as we've shown here, it's cyclic because of the ring. That's your longest continuous chain, and making it hexane, and branches appear accordingly. Just to remind you that in this uh, British Chem Guide website, uh, goes through some naming conventions with the cyclic hydrocarbons as well, so you may want to have a look at that if you like. And that concludes this video.